In this short video, I want to take on an important aspect of reading charts, otherwise known grandly as technical analysis, and that's the moving average. So why do we have them and how useful are they? Well, Albert Edwards, well-known analyst, once said the S&P 500 is on the verge of the ultimate death cross. Now that is a reference to something produced by whatever a moving average is. It's a pretty dramatic statement. What does it mean? And I'll come back to death crosses a bit later on. So the objective, basically what we're trying to do here is get to a position where we can tell whether we should buy or sell a stock. Always worth bearing in mind that all this science and all these charts, that's the ultimate objective. The underlying trend can be blurred by noise and short-term volatility. Now, I touched on that in an earlier presentation. So what we're saying there is, is there a technique that can take out some of the noise, take out some of the distracting movement in share prices and give us a clearer picture? And the answer is, there is something called a moving average. It can help us to focus on the true picture in relation to a stock or a sector or an index. And it can also help us to do one or two other things that I'll mention later in the video, identify turning points, support and resistance levels as they're sometimes known. So whatever it is, it's potentially Quite a useful tool. Now the basics. Here are 10 days worth of stock prices all over the place. All right, quite hard to discern a pattern from that lot. You've got some strong days some less strong days and quite a volatile pattern. So can we actually get the underlying picture out using something like a moving average? Well it's possible. You can basically start to get a feel for actually how volatile this share price is over 10 days using something like a moving average. Now, I'm gonna use a five day moving average to illustrate my point, but in practice, that's a little short, but that's purely to demonstrate the numbers as a one-off for those people who are interested. So, a five day moving average, and I've done five days worth of data there, if you like, would look as follows. Now, to do the first one, you need five days. So, nothing really happens until you get five days worth of data, at which point, you can do a backward looking, as it always is, five day moving average. Now, the first one is just a straight average in fairness. So the first line there, days one to five, just says if you read off those share prices, so one, two, three, two, four, and divided by five, you've had, you'd have a conventional mean or arithmetic average, if you like, of 2.4. Now that doesn't tell you anything, it's not a moving average, it's just an average of 2.4. But it moves when you do it the next time. So once you've done days sort of one to five, then you can shuffle along, knock off the first one, once you've got day six, add in day six and recalculate. So line two, won't go through every single one, says take days two to six, two plus three plus two plus four plus five, divide by five to get an average, 3.2. So the moving average, if like the average has moved from 2.4 to 3.2, and it's this column actually that's going to be of interest in a moment. Now, if you keep repeating that process, you can do it for days three to seven, four to eight, five to nine, six to ten. The moving averages will drop out on the right hand side. And you might be thinking, so what? Where's all this number crunching going? Well, it's going to painting this picture. If I were to say, what does that reveal? Well, there's the 10 share prices again. We're looking at them thinking, how much volatility, what can, I, what can I conclude from there in terms of underlying price movements and so on. There in grey, all right, coming in there, is the moving average that I just calculated, plotted for the days that I can do it, because I picked a five day moving average. You know, I needed to have the data before I could actually do anything. That's why it only starts at day five. And if you were to put a line over the grey bars, it would look a bit like that. So actually on a moving average, a sort of rolling basis, the underlying share price movement isn't quite as volatile as it might at first look from a snapshot. And that's kind of the point of moving averages is to say, you know, a little bit of daily noise isn't helpful in terms of making a decision about do I buy uh, or sell a stock, particularly over the medium to long term. So let's try and strip that out. And my little five day moving average tries to do exactly that. In practice, five days is very short. The market, if you're looking at big indices like the S&P 500, for example, will tend to look back over 50 days as, you know, as even, even that's considered quite short term or 200 days to get the kind of bigger picture, almost primary trend, if you like. Now, interpretation, basic interpretation. If that green line is rising, right, it's fairly flat in my diagram, but it's rising, then you've got an uptrend. And if it's falling, 
you've got a downtrend just smoothing out some of the volatility. And if the next price comes out you know, above or below the moving average, that in itself is a kind of bullish signal, albeit it's only one. So people will sometimes just say, well, let's look at the latest stock price compared to the moving average. Is it above, bullish, or below, kind of bearish, if you like. Be a little bit careful. Short moving averages will tend to give you more volatility, which is why even when people are looking at the short term for a much bigger market like American shares, they'll tend to say 50 days is short enough. But you will see if you play with you know, derivatives or currencies, these principles can be applied in lots of different markets, different lengths of moving averages, depending on the market's preference in that particular part of the market. And in practice, as I mentioned, you know, 50 and 200 day, more common than five, although you can actually do a moving average for any period in theory that you like. One other caveat, some people will give more weight to the later data than the earlier data. And there's a technique that takes that into account, which I haven't mentioned here, but the principle is, well, let's strip out some of the short-term volatility and get to the underlying picture. Now, how is that useful? Other than you can start to say things like, if I know the moving average and the stock price is above it, maybe that's a little bullish signal, albeit based on one data point, below it is bearish. What else can you do? Now, there's lots of things you can do with moving averages. In future videos, we'll talk about these more. I just want to finish with sort of a couple and wrap up with that Albert Edwards quote again, whatever that was, the, the death cross. So, Here's support and resistance. Sometimes what people do is they say, right, there is a typically volatile stock price moving up and moving down. All right, and people will sort of say, well, if I have a look at a moving average, is there anything I can sort of infer from that moving average? And some people would say, well, the moving average does seem to be acting as some sort of support on the way up. Yeah, a sort of level below which the market doesn't seem to want to dip on the way up. And on the way down, you've got some sort of line of resistance here, which is broken a couple of times there and there, if you like. So yeah, people will sometimes use moving averages as a way of identifying what are called support and resistance lines. Why? Because they're trying to get a feel for where the stock might go next or you know, how wide the volatility could be using the past as a fairly sort of simple guide to the future. So there's one. Um, quick summary of a possible use of moving averages, support and resistance, as it's called. Su su you know, support tends to be sort of keeping the stock price sort of up, literally supported. Resistance tends to be, or you know, can't struggling to now push through that. In this case, on the way down. Now, golden and death crosses. You'll see a lot of these. You know, journalists love all this kind of language: the golden cross, the death cross. So, what's all that about? Uh, and this is one that comes up a lot. In simple terms, some analysts, I stress some, would say that these work as follows. If you were to compare a short, and I'm saying that's a 50-day moving average for, say, the American S&P 500, with a much longer term, a 200-day moving average, can you draw some conclusions about the way the two interact? And you possibly can. All right? If I was to pop on the 200-day moving average, all right, that's 200 days worth of data, maybe with a bit of waiting given to later prices and so on, but it doesn't really matter. There's a 200-day goes you know, up, down, and up, and then I was to put a 50-day in, what people are interested in, basically, when they talk about crosses, is, I suppose not surprisingly, that, that, and that, when it happens. Literally, the 50-day cuts through the 200-day in one or either direction. And here's the point. For some people, for some technical analysts or chartists, when the 50-day moving average does that, that is golden, that's good news. You want to get on the bandwagon there because it's, it tends to imply that the longer term trend is upwards. It's going to pull the 200 day up with it. So that's kind of a, a bullish signal. And for some people, it's a very bullish signal when it happens. Equally, the 50 day, that's the green one, remember the short term one cutting down through the red one is a bearish signal. And just to give it some really flowery language, that's the, the so-called death cross. You want to be out the market, really bearish, bad news. Short-term movement's down, longer term is bound to be down sooner rather than later. Is that the perfect signal? Is that what you do? Get your S&P 500 chart out, compare the 50 to the 200, buy when one crosses on the upside, sell when it crosses on the downside. Well, if only life was that easy. So I'm going to finish with a few problems. All right, one, moving averages are backward looking. Backward looking, five days backward looking, 50 day, 200 days. You're using the past 
as a guide to the future. And that can always be a little bit dangerous. For every believer, there's a cynic. And being more precise about it, there are people who disagree about what I actually just said. You know, is it true that a golden cross is any 50 day cutting up through the 200 day? Or do you need the 200 day to be rising as well? And equally is a death cross just any point where the 50 day cuts down through the 200? Or do you need them both to be going south with a cut through? And, and some say one and some say the other. So there's not even universal agreement about what is a golden cross. Some people go, well, a golden cross. And other people go, don't think so. So there's that problem. Then there are people who say, well, actually, if you look at what's happened in recent years in particular, these only work a certain proportion of the time. And what happens if you buy, you know, when one, when you're getting the wrong signal? Okay, so they don't all, you can't always trust them. It's not like you can say every time there's been one for the S&P, Bob's your uncle, you buy or sell. All right. Timing's another problem. It's all very well thinking, well, there's this golden cross coming up. Ideally, you'd have got in before it happened, but that's difficult. Um, you can get in too late. So even when it works, Sometimes people just get into the trade later than they should and don't make the money they're kind of expecting to. And probably most important, if all these chart patterns were surefire winners, there would be no market. Right? Markets are made up of people who believe these things and people who don't. So you have to sort of pay your money and take your choice. All right? But there you have it. A brief introduction to the moving average, to the glorious, glorious language of technical analysis, ending there with a couple of big ones, the golden and the death cross, with charting, be careful. It can give you interesting and useful chart signals, stock signals, but it's certainly not 100% foolproof.